Dear viewers, welcome to the YouTube channel H2O Chemistry. In this uh, YouTube channel, we see the chemistry concepts which is made easy to you. Keep learning through this channel. You will apply these concepts in your higher studies so that when you learn higher concepts, it will be very easy for you. Subscribe and click the bell button so that you will get the notifications when we upload the videos. Today in this video we are going to talk about the Bohr's model of an atom, postulates of it and then its limitations. First, why do we require this model? We will see. We know that in our previous video we have learned that there is some limitations of Rutherford atomic model. Rutherford has discovered nucleus using gold foil scattering experiment, alpha scattering experiment. So in this he discovered nucleus. What are the drawbacks for this model? It doesn't explain the electromagnetic theory. What is this theory? when the positive charge is the center, when the negative charge revolves around it, it keeps on reduces or keep on loses its energy and keep on reduces its path and finally fell into the nucleus and the particle becomes unstable. When you imagine to the atom, the nucleus is positive charge, positively charged whereas the electrons are revolving around it. So, <coughs> atom should be an unstable one. But in our normal day to day life we know that atom is stable. So the stability of an atom cannot be explained by the Rutherford atomic model. So in order to explain that Bohr's says a different concept to the stability of an atom. So that we will see in this video. Before that a small recap on all the atomic models. The first one, Dalton's atomic model. It is a, he said, spherical in shape, so he said it's a billiard board model. The next one will be Thomson atomic model. It is a blum budding model because he discovered electrons, so he said positive charges spread all around the atom, whereas electrons are embedded in the fixed positions. So he said plum budding model. The next one will be Rutherford model. Then Rutherford discovered nucleus, so he said nucleus at the center, the electrons are revolving around it. This model is otherwise called planetary model. The next one, Bohr's model. This is what we are going to learn. So Bohr's explained the stability of an atom. Now, introduction to Bohr's model of an atom is Bohr, and in 1913, Nobel uh, Niels Bohr, a Danish physicist explain the causes of stability of an atom in different manner. So before we understand the postulates, let us go and understand the some terms related to this uh, model. Now first of all, he said nucleus is at the center, the electrons are revolving around it in the this path. When the electrons are revolving around like this, he said this path, he said the stationary circular paths are discrete concentric circles. Discrete concentric circles. So he called the stationary circular paths. This uh, stationary circular paths he called it as orbits. Orbits or energy shells or energy levels. Okay, why it is called orbits? Because the electrons are revolving in the particular circular path, so he called it orbits. What do you mean by energy level? Each shell or orbit, each shell, each shell or orbit has definite amount of energy, definite amount of energy. The first cell has a least in energy, second cell has a higher energy, third cell has a higher energy than that of second and first shell, fourth shell is higher energy. So there are how many shells or energy levels in an atom? There are infinity, infinite number of 
energy shells in an atom. So this we have to understand first. So this circles represents orbits or energy levels or energy shells. The first circle we call orbit is called K shell. The number is n is equal to 1. The n here is called quantum number, otherwise called principal quantum number. We'll be learning this about in higher studies. So the when n is equal to 1, it indicates K shell. Whereas the n is equal to 2 indicates L shell. The second shell is called L shell. The third shell is called M. And the fourth shell is called N. The numbers respectively, the numbers N is equal to 3 and 4 respectively. So this is the, the, this is the idea we should be clear. So this idea is given by Niels Bohr. Fine. When an, an electron present in the K shell, it is in the lowest energy. It is in the lowest energy. Now, let us uh, imagine electrons are revolving in the same circle. What he said, when the electrons are revolving around the nucleus in these orbits, it's neither lose energy nor gain energy. So it keep on revolves in the same orbit or shells. So it until it revolves, it neither loss or gain energy. So if it loss energy only, it will fell into nucleus. Right? So as long as the electron revolving in the same K shell or orbit, so it neither lose or nor gain energy. So this we have to understand. This is one of the postulates of Bose theory. And then let us uh, go to our normal life situation. So when you go to any 10-story building, so where you reach first, ground floor. The ground floor, if you go, we require less energy to reach the ground floor. So can I say it is the lowest energy? So the first ground floor, if you want to reach, we require, we spend very less energy. What about the second, first floor? First floor, if you want to, we have to climb the steps we require additional energy for that. If we want to go to the second floor, we require further energy to climb the steps. So imagine like that. But what about coming down? Coming down process will be somewhat easy, but we spend the same amount of energy while coming down. It's a kind of release, right? So we require energy for climbing up, and when you come down, we somewhat feel less. So that's what we're going to apply here. Just come to this. When the electron present in the K shell, look at this diagram. When the electron present in the K shell, only one electron is here, present here, we call such a state as ground state. So for, let us say, hydrogen. Hydrogen is a first element. The atomic number is one, so it has a one electron in it. Let us see, this is a representation of hydrogen atom. So the nucleus has one proton. The electron present in the K shell first, so it is in the ground state. So when the electron present in the actual shell, we call that as a ground state. But when any sunlight or any heat energy falls on this atom, the electron will gain energy. The electron will gain energy. I told you the this diagram, I told you <coughs> K shell has fixed amount of energy and L shell also has a fixed amount of energy. So let us understand this and then we'll go to this diagram. First of all, when you go away from the nucleus, what do you see? Look at this diagram and we will understand. Look at the first orbit. The size of the orbit is smaller than that of L shell. The L shell as the size is smaller than that of M shell. The M shell size is smaller than that of M shell. So can I say in other words, when you go away from the nucleus, when you go away from the nucleus, the size of a shell increases. Size of the shells increases. What is a one more idea? Look at the distance. K shell is close to the nucleus. L shell is further away from the nucleus. M shell is further away from the nucleus. So when you go away from the nucleus, the distance between the nucleus and the shell gets increasing. Shell gets increasing. So increases. So that is the second point. So size is increases when you go away from the nucleus, then the 
distance from the nucleus is increases the next one energy so the k shell has particular energy uh, very least energy it has because uh, when you go to the ground state it's very least energy remember so when you go to the building when you go to the ground floor it has a it, we require less energy similarly um, the k shell which is very nearer to the nucleus has a very less energy the next one l shell l shell has uh, higher energy than that of higher energy than that of uh, k shell k shell the m shell has further higher energy than that of k and l what about the n shell you are right the n shell has very high energy than that of k l m energy so when you move away from this nucleus the energy of the shell also increases energy of the shells as well as the size and the distance also increases now so the three points what you have learned is size of the shell increases distance from the nucleus and the shell increases and the energy of the shell increases okay look at the uh, video game so in video games when you play the first level of a video game is normally very easy we spend less energy to overcome that first level when you go to second level we need to look on more ideas so that we will cross the second level and we'll go to third level so similar idea we can apply here the k shell is very least in energy l shell is a uh, further it has a high in energy so when you go away from the nucleus the energy of the shell gets increases so with this concept we will, we will see this idea so when there any electron present in the k shell present in the k shell it is in the ground state it is in the ground state for example it's a hydrogen atom and the first electron is in the k shell it is in the ground state now when i supply energy to this what will happen the electron will gain energy so we know that k shell is in lowest energy whereas uh, l shell is in the highest energy highest energy when compared to that now let us imagine let us assume that k shell energy is 10 kilo joules whereas a uh, l shell energy second shell energy is second shell energy second shell energy is a uh, uh, 25 kilo joules so what is the difference between these two 10 25 so 15 kilo joules is a difference so when this electron gains 15 kilo joules it will jump to the l shell so this is we call excited state you can see excited state so when any light falls on this electron it will absorb the energy by absorbing the energy it will jump from lower energy shell to higher energy shell so we call it as an excited state normally excited state is very less stable when compared to ground state because uh, the actual place of that electron is k shell so it will jump to the l shell by absorbing energy so it will become less stable so excited state is always less, st uh, less stable what is excited state when the electron jump from the lower energy to the lower energy shell to the higher energy shell we call it as excited state now so if it is less stable we know that atom wants to be stable so immediately the electron will come down you could see the electron will come down by releasing energy by releasing energy so the electron from the k shell will immediately come down to uh, from the l shell immediately come down to k shell by immediately immediately to release energy it immediately release energy so now what is the amount of energy is released so the 25 kilo joules is the energy of l shell whereas 10 kilo joules is the energy of k shell so it will emit 15 kilo joules of energy when it's come down from l shell to k shell the numbers are just to understand the concept that's all now so you could see this uh, diagram you will understand that what is called uh, excited state what is called ground state when the electron absorbs energy when the electrons release energy so all these things we will understand so when the electron goes from lower energy level to higher energy level it absorbs energy it absorbs energy whereas when the electron come from higher energy level to lower energy level it releases energy in the form of radiations so the radiations always we measure in h nu h is planck constant v is frequency nu is frequency so you could see the electron will come from third shell to the second shell so it emits radiations it emits radiation now 
come back to this uh, picture in this uh, the first shell is called k shell the shells are discovered by the scientist called Bragg Bargley Bargley said that why he didn't give the name he didn't give the letter a b c d but instead he start with k l m n the Bargley said that during his uh, experiment he thought that there is a further energy levels inside so in the after some time when scientists discovered the further energy levels inside the sci scientists can give a b c d so that he started giving the letter he started using the letter k l because he thought that there is a further energy levels inside but later scientists have experimented and found out that there is no energy levels in between nucleus and k shell nucleus is the first energy level so they retained now the scientists have retained the letter k l m n so they didn't start with a b c d so this idea you should know why they didn't start with a b c d so the a b c d they didn't give because the scientist bargley has given the letter k because he thought that there is some inner shells in between k and nucleus but later the scientists found that there is no such a nucleus inside so they thought they now continue this naming as k l m n so now we will move on to the next idea what are the postulates of this bohr's model of an atom now look at this diagram you can easily understand now the center we have nucleus and the electron present in the a k shell the first shell n is equal to 1 is a k shell n is equal to 2 l shell n is equal to 3 m n o p like that it goes how many shells we have in an atom there are infinite number of shells we have in an atom now we know that the the electrons are revolving in the circular stationary circular paths we call orbit or energy levels or energy shells and uh, and uh, the electrons revolve as long as the electron revolves in the same orbit it neither loss or gain energy and when the electron in the particular shell gains energy it will jump from lower energy till to higher energy level whereas uh, when the electron present in the higher energy state that we call excited state so it will lose energy you could see here it, could, it will lose energy or emit energy in the form of radiation so it will come down from higher energy level to lower energy level it re releases radiation it releases radiation what are the what are the um, uh, symbols or representation we give for n is equal to 1 it's a k shell 2 l shell like that okay we can continue that but there are infinite number of energy levels in an atom so how do you call the electron present in the k shell electron present in the k shell is called k electrons the electron present in the l shell is called l electrons the electron present in the m shell are called m electrons and so on so the energy of the k shell is least so when the electron started to fill in an atom it occupies the first shell because when you step into the building we go to the ground floor first then only we climb to the what first floor second floor like that similarly when the electron goes to the uh, atom it occupies the k shell first and then go to the l shell and then to the m shell because energy of the shells keep on increases gets increases now this is the idea that's the reason he said that it's cause it, it is called energy levels he called energy levels come to the next these are the um, points we discussed let's go to the first point in atom the electrons revolve around the nucleus in the stationary circular paths he called as orbits he called as orbits or shells or energy levels while revolving around the nucleus in an orbit the electron neither loses or nor gains energy so this point is very important because the electromagnetic theory now it breaks because he, it explains the stability of an atom when the electron revolves around the nucleus in a particular orbit it neither loss or nor gain energy if it losses only it will be unstable but as per Bohr concept 
the uh, until the, the electrons revolve in the particular orbit it neither lose or nor gain energy so this point you have to be clear and an electron in a shell can move to higher energy or lower energy shell by absorbing or releasing a fixed amount of energy for example the electron jump from orbit 1 to orbit 2 the energy of uh, orbit 1 is e1 the energy of orbit 2 is e2 the difference in the energy can be calculated by using e2 minus e1 so in this the energy difference also we can easily calculate now the the orbit or shells are represented by letters k l m n etc or the number number numbers we call principal quantum number n is principal quantum number so which is which you will be studying in higher classes which is nothing but a, like an address to locate an electron do we have address yes similarly electrons do have address so that address is nothing but quantum numbers so n is equal to 1 2 3 4 n 2 3 4 up to infinity it has now this point we discussed already what is our name why this name is called energy levels energy shells now what are the limitations of Bose theory we will see see one main drawback of this Bose model is that uh, this model is applicable only to hydrogen or hydrogen like atoms hydrogen or hydrogen like atoms you could see the Bohr's model of an atom otherwise called hydrogen model because it has hydrogen has only one electron in an atom so this model is applicable only to hydrogen and nitrogen like ions what is meant by hydrogen like ion now for example helium helium atom has a two electron because atomic number is two whereas when you remove one electron from an helium atom it becomes one plus helium one plus the helium one plus the helium one plus is called is consists of only one electron so it is called hydrogen like ion the hydrogen atom consists of one electron even a he plus consists of one electron similarly lithium lithium atomic number is three when you remove two electrons it becomes two plus so now the lithium has only one electron so the the lithium 2 plus is like hydrogen so we call hydrogen like ion so for these kind of ions only the hydrogen model this Bohr's model of an atom can be used it cannot be extended to the multiple electron nucleus what is called multiple electron nucleus? more than one electron if any atom has those atoms we call multi electron nucleus so like helium it has a two electrons so it is not like hydrogen lithium it has a three electron it is not like hydrogen so similarly gold copper has a plenty of electrons so for these atoms Bohr's model of an a model of an atom cannot be utilized or applied so that is the one you have to understand I hope this video will be very helpful in understanding the Bohr's model of an atom keep learning the chemistry concepts made easy here subscribe click the bell button the notifications will come to you immediately Thank you.